watching sunrise. If you like the thrift haul videos, please hit the subscribe button. Then you'll find me here all the time. I'm trying to get more regular and having my thrift hauls up at least once a week or once a month. Hey everyone, welcome back. Thanks for joining my channel. And I'm gonna show you a thrift haul. Got my heated vest on, it's negative seven right now. I'm a little chilly. So here, those of us in Wisconsin, we have heated vest. You can turn your heat high, medium, and low. I'm on high. Red is high. It's cold. Here's my thrift haul. This little concrete smoother outer thing. I believe it's called a... Trowel. Trowel. <laughs> It was $2.97. It even comes complete with concrete still attached to it. I just really like this old vintage homemade trowel. Picked it up for $2.98. Um, then I got some candlesticks, three of them, right here. I'm not sure what color I'm gonna paint them. Let me know in the comments if I painted them the same color you thought. They were, I got a whole bunch of stuff from her and I'll tell you what I all got and then I don't remember what I paid for it, but it's like two bucks a piece. So here's some candlesticks that she also had. They have a lot of ornate features on them. They're, they're kind of, I don't know, they're not such a great color. They're okay but I'm going to paint them up. I believe I'll probably paint them black and then do some white distressing to them. So follow along and see what I do with them. Next up, look at this. I'm sure there was a glass vase or something in here. The glass vase is gone and now all that's left is this metal candle holder. I love it. It's got some good patina on it. It, it was $2.59. And uh, see, it's got some good stuff on there. I'll probably give it a little bit of a paint job, a little bit of a rust look to it, maybe. So, not sure, but I really, really do like this. It's my kind of thing. Then I have a nice blue cobalt jar. I always love the blue jars. This also came from my friend and she thought it would look really pretty in my bathroom. Don't ever pass up a blue jar. They're so pretty. I have a picture frame. I had painted a picture of two bunnies in a little wreath there. I printed it off on just regular paper and I stuck it inside this frame, but I'm going to paint this frame anyway. Not sure that I like it in there, but we'll see once I paint it. That was 28 cents, and it even comes complete with a easel. Next up, we have another frame. I had um, printing things off in mind and putting them in a frame. This one has a really good color. I think I might just enhance that color a little bit. It also comes with an easel. It's a square. I like that. Um, I think I'm probably gonna put something in here for spring because of that green color. It's a pretty green. Next up was just a regular picture frame and it has the easy access to it. And like I said, I was thinking um, vintage garden sayings on them. Oh, I forgot to tell you. This one didn't have a price on it, so they charged me the same price as this one, 68 cents. So 68 cents for this one and 68 cents for this one. This one does have the glass, and but it is easy access. I'm gonna paint the frame and then also just put a nice garden saying in there. It's almost springtime, we're thinking spring because it's cold. And then last but not least, I got a couple of bunnies. And this bunny is a bell. It's got a little bell in there. He was 98 cents. He's got a butterfly on the top of his head. He needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but I'm gonna keep him as is. I do really well with my bunnies and he is just sweet. 
So what you can do with your figurines is just put them on top of the candle stick holder. You don't have to have a candle up there. You can have a figurine. And right now, a little bunny is perfect. This little bunny was 68 cents. Look at how sweet he is. He is going to stay as is. Whoever painted him did a really good job on painting him so sweet. He's got a lot of personality. I used to do ceramics, so there's no initials engraved on the bottom. I would engrave my initials down there, but he's really sweet and he will be sold as is. So follow along in the rest of my video and I'll show you how I fix these things up. For these candlesticks, I decided to use the DIY pennies from heaven and put a complete solid coverage of this copper patina onto these candlesticks. It took two coats, but it, the finish was definitely worth it. After the copper was completely dry, I took the DIY dark wax and went right over the top of the pennies from heaven, wiped it back so that the dark wax stays in the crevices and the rest shines up to that pretty copper. Next up, I'm using my IOD typesetter stamps and I'm going to spell out the word garden. I'm going to put that on the concrete trawl and I'm using my thin mount which has lines on it to make sure my letters are lined up perfectly and uh, you have to spell the word backwards because when you flip it over then it's correct so there's that word garden. And now I'm going to put it onto the concrete trowel. And I didn't figure out until after this step that I could lean that trowel on two paint cans and it would hold up a little bit easier. So stamping that on to that side. Then I used the sprig stamp and inked them up, adding a few of those sprigs flowers just here and there. I'll let you see the process. The sprig stamp is a perfect addition for all those vintage garden signs you're going to want to make this summer. So if you would like this stamp, you can find it at thepaintedphotographer.com and you will have tons of uses for it. Walk up the river by my sun Feet step over splinters of the moon Now this wood was really dry, so I went over it with the DIY clear wax. I just have a old chippy brush that I put this wax on with and went over and you can see how it's just sucking in all that wax and getting a nice pretty wood color. I also went over the front side of the trawl with this DIY wax and then I used the dark wax and went over the entire back side with the dark wax because I really like that dark wood color. And then on the front side, I only went around to the edges and uh, you have to wipe back that dark wax and uh, it just gives it a nice age.
So here's the front side, and I just went around the edges, kind of framing that sign out. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden. Golden. Here's the candle holder. I decided to go with the Shipwreck Wax. That is a DIY product and it has a beautiful teal color to it. I buffed back that teal wax. It's really easy to work with and it just well, it goes right on. This is fast motion doing the entire candle holder with this shipwreck wax it was pretty all by itself that's all i did to this is just added the wax no paint diy has a new product called golden rule it's a gold wax so i went over the shipwreck with this gold wax applying it with just a small little artist brush and then you wipe back this wax also and after it's all completely dried you'll just buff it bringing it back to a really pretty sheen these two pair really well together These candle holders I decided to do kind of a two-tone paint job to them like they were. So I painted one in weathered wood. I didn't show that process, but it's all painted in weathered wood, which is a dark brown. And then I used some liquid patina, crystal clear liquid patina, and covered it up. Then I used the white paint, DIY white swan, and went over top of the weathered wood finish and when you distress back you will not go through that weathered wood skeleton key was next up so i went over top of the white paint with skeleton key and that covered not completely just hit the tops of some of those ornate details in it i wanted a heavy distress back to that white so i went over the skeleton key with a baby wipe when the paint wasn't hardly dry it was still kind of on the wet side which made it distress a lot easier bringing it back to some of the white and then down to that weathered wood finish and i really like this look Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, I'll follow home. Golden, golden, golden. I then put a layer of big top over top of the paint finish, sealing everything in. spring rainbow trout and hummingbird wing. Golden. Benjamin Moore's color of the year is October mist and I'm trying to recreate it here I have farm fresh and cake batter and I'm going to mix those two together to get a really pretty green October mist is a bit on the lighter side than this so I added some white as well so this is as close as i came to october mist and i really think it's a good combo i painted a couple items in this color and i really like it so there you go this is the, one of the frames that i painted with this october mist i know it was a pretty green already but don't you just like this october mist instead 
and I didn't go down inside those edges. I just left it so I could see the dark color in there, but mainly covered it all up. I went over top of it with a clear wax to seal the October mist in, and then the white wax, where all the magic happens. I'm a white wax fan, and I went over the entire thing with the white wax and wiped it back, really giving it that nice October mist look. I need help giving this color a name. So if you have a name for me, drop it in the comments. I'd love to hear it. This small little frame I just painted in white and distressed it back and then added the skeleton key, which is the same process I did on the candlesticks. It turned out really cute. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming in. Golden, golden, I'll follow home. Golden, 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 golden things. in spring rainbow trout and hummingbird wing golden i follow golden. we're gonna do some more color mix in here i have kissing booth and petticoat pink this picture which i wanted to put in the frame had the pink but it was lighter than petticoat or kissing booth and darker than petticoat so i mixed them together this time i mixed them while i was painting the frame so I went on with a coat of petticoat pink and then I took to kissing booth while the paint was wet and just blended the two together. I did this a couple of times until I finally got the finish and the coverage that I was looking for. Dressed it back with a baby wipe to some of that wood color to let that pop through and bring out some of those details. And this frame is extremely pretty in pink. Next up, I needed brown ink. I needed to age my prints when I put them in there. So tomato and new grass, I mix those two inks together. This is on a plastic mylar so it doesn't soak in and mixing those up you get a nice brown color and i wanted it to make sure it was really dark so i added a couple drops of black so this is 50 50 and then just a couple drops of black to darken that brown up then i'm using the iod ink pad and i'm going to soak it right up so the iod came out with a new ink pad it's twice as big and it's got a nice surface so i just scooped that ink up on the ink pad absorbing all of the goodness there then i did take my spatula that i used to mix and i made sure that i got every single drop so this is your color concoction for a brown ink and it serves as like a distressing ink and it's permanent the images that i put in the frame i got off of etsy and i printed them off and now I'm aging it using this brown ink. You can see one white and one brown. I really like the distressed look to it. So this little fox that's going in the pink frame got distressed as well. Appalachian sunrise. The frame got a coat of big top to seal everything in. Big top, I use a container that says dirty big top. 
I only pour a small amount into it and then I dip my brush into that one. You do not want to contaminate your entire container of Big Top. So if I do contaminate it, it gets a little stinky. It's still okay to use. It's just in a smaller amount. What was your favorite finish? This was mine. I really like the two-toned paint on these scrolly candlesticks. But I also love the copper with the dark wax. It's a perfect marriage. And this, so cool. And this was just waxes, no paint involved. Super easy. If you want any of these products, please visit my website at thepaintedphotographer.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. And until next time, happy painting. find it. If you like this video, please hit the notification. <laughs> if you like videos like this, please hit the notif- <laughs> If I can't do once a week, it'll be twice a week. So, no. <laughs>